In the past, many of the Highland clans only survived by their abilities to farm and raise livestock. The world of the north was cold and isolated. The ownership of good grazing land could be the difference between the survival or the disappearance of your clan and your brothers. This fight for power and relevance was the cause of many disputes in Scotland. The Loch of the Sword. Laying at the intersection between the counties of Inverness, Perth and Argyll is a small yet important loch that we now know as Loch Ahwaiach or the Loch of the Sorb. It was given this name over 300 years ago when it became the meeting place between the chief of the Camerons of Loch Eel and the Earl of Athol. At that time, the lands of Loch Aber which lie to the west of the small loch, were owned by Clan Cameron, and in the east, the lands of Rannach were the property of the Earl of Athol. It would seem that both men believed that the loch and the grazing lands around it belonged to them. For many years, neither man would give in. All manner of settlements were attempted. Great chiefs from other powerful clans offered to mediate a deal, but the men would not move. Eventually, this led to war, and on many occasion, the small loch would be red with Scottish blood, as neither side gave way. But there came a time when both Loch Eel of Cameron and the Earl of Athol had grown weary of the continual warfare and death of their clansmen. So it was that a meeting was arranged between the resolute men. They were to meet upon a certain day by the small loch. Both were to come alone and endeavour to arrive at a peaceful solution. When the day arrived, Loch Eel of the Camerons left early in the morning and made his way eastwards towards the small loch all alone. Walking through the heather, the man came upon an old, crooked woman heading in the opposite direction. As the two passed each other, the crone's hand pounced upon Loch Eel's arm. Pulling the tall man down to her level, the crone called, Far are your men, Loch Eel. A little shocked by the woman's forcefulness, the man withdrew his arm and said, Had your peace, woman. No need for many day. I travel to the wee loch yonner where Arthur has agreed to meet me on his ain. With this said, the bold Cameron continued walking, but the crone would not be so easily pushed aside. With haste, she limped after the man and grabbed at his plaid. This time, with a look most urgent, the woman told Loch Eel that if he went to the meeting alone, he would never return, and this land would then belong to Arthur. Releasing the chief, the woman walked away, but called back, Far are your men, Loch Eel. Find your men. The Cameron chief was not happy with this. He had agreed to meet Athel alone, and was a man of his word, but he dared not ignore the crone's warning. Loch Eel turned about and ran home to collect a bodyguard of three score warriors. He told them to follow at a distance, and when he arrived at the loch, the men were to hide in the heather and bracken, only to appear if given the signal, a loud whistle from Loch Eel. For the most part, Cameron did not intend on summoning his men, they were only there as a precaution. So in the course of that day, a time would arrive when Loch Eel, chief of Clan Cameron, would stand face to face with the Earl of Athol, overlooking the small loch on the county border. With a wave of his hand, twenty stalwart Highlanders leapt from the heather. Loch Eel, in a fury, demanded to know who these men were. A smile of disdain appeared on the face of Athol as he replied, 
These are but simple Athol rams, come only to graze upon the land of Cameron. A loud piercing whistle emanated from Lochiel, and the six-day Cameron men sprang from their hiding place, swords in hand. The Earl of Athol stood wide-eyed and speechless, as Lochiel with a wide grin called, These are the hounds of Cameron, they are sharp a tooth and fair famished all keen to tear the flesh for your Athol rams. At this, Lochiel drew his own sword and demanded that Athol renounce his claims upon the land. For not much longer would he hold at bay the hounds of Cameron. Athol knew he was outwitted and defeated. Without further delay, he agreed to the terms and as a sign of his commitment to the new agreement, Athol drew his sword kissed the shining blade and threw it into the loch. He declared that as long as the blade remained hidden within the loch, these lands belong to Clan Cameron. It is in this way that the loch where the brave men met came by its name. All thanks to the foresight of one mysterious woman, the Clan Cameron still hold the lands by the loch of the sword. Interestingly, this is not the final appearance of the sword. Over 200 years later, in 1812, a young boy was out fishing in that very loch. It was a warm summer's day. The boy had been there for some hours and was yet to catch anything. He decided to take one final cast. And to the boy's amazement, it would seem something had taken the hook. Oddly, his catch did not fight back but did seem to be of some weight. Eventually, the boy pulled from the loch an old basket-hilted claymore. Unfortunately for the boy, it was deemed too dangerous of an artefact to leave in his possession. Instead, it was given to a local minister, who kept it in the church. At least that was the case, until the boy's story found its way to the new Loch Eel of Clan Cameron. A great panic was spread through the clan when they found that the sword had been recovered. It was said that many an old Cameron began to prepare swords and pistols on that day. But fortunately, by this time, the hostilities between the clans had settled, as Scotland concentrated on a much worse enemy. The Camerons took the sword from the minister, and in a great procession, they marched the artefact back to the loch and once again cast the blade into the loch of the sword. That was the last known appearance of the blade which belonged to the Earl of Athol. So to this very day, the claymore still lies at the bottom of Loch Ahwaiach. Thank you for listening, and a special thank you to all my patrons. Slang Javah.